All right, let's talk about the G major scale and name the notes in it. And then we'll talk about some of those tricks or patterns on the guitar fretboard that'll help you know what note you're playing and where you can find notes that have the same letter name, an octave up or an octave down. So here's the G scale first of all. And I would also get used to playing that backwards. Because when guitar players do uh, solos and lead parts, they don't just play scales going up, they also play scales going down or descending, we call that ascending and descending scales. So once you get comfortable playing the G scale going up, also play it going down or descending. So the letter names of the notes, G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, and G. Notice a few times I used my pinky. On that F sharp I used it. You don't have to, but you can use your third finger there. But. I also use my pinky on D on the second string, but you could use your third finger there. And, and I used it for G as well. So, but all those you can use your third finger. I just like to use my pinky a lot to strengthen it and uh, keep it happy. Okay, so and then backwards of course, G, F sharp, E, D, C, B, A, G, F sharp, E, D, C, B, A, G. And by the way, we call that a uh, two octave G scale because it spans from this G to that G, open string three, and finally ends on this G, which is string one fret three. So it spans two octaves from this one to this one, and from this one to this one. So take a G chord, right? You have three G's in it. The three G's I just played, string six fret three, open string three. Let's turn this low so you can see my right hand a bit. And string one fret three. When you strum it, you just hear a G chord, but there it's made of the individual notes, of course. Okay, so now let's um, do some of these octave things. Uh, and you can actually take chords that you already know, like the G chord. But what about E minor? This is another one where you have uh, three notes, but uh, three of the same uh, notes in the chord. There's three E's. But it starts on an open string, so this makes it a little harder to do our pattern. But if you use the same logic that you use for the G chord or the, the F chord, F, 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 string 6 fret 1, string 4 fret 3, and string 1 fret 1, three Fs there, we, we did that. Uh, the E minor chord, you just move everything back one fret. Right, so E, and then the next E is on string 4 fret 2, and the last E is on string 1 open. So actually, that brings up the point that the bottom string is E, and the top string is E open, so all the letter names going all the way up the fret are going to be the same on string 1 and string, uh, and string 6, uh, all the way up. E, E, F, F, F sharp, F sharp, G, G. G sharp, G sharp, G sharp, A, A, and so on, all the way up the neck, they're going to be the same because the open strings are the same, E and E. So there's an octave. But in between those two octaves, you have another one. So uh, like we just said, E, 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 F, 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 G, or sorry, F sharp, F sharp, F sharp. But when you're going up, remember, uh, you get sharp, so F, F sharp. But if you're going down, 
the pitch is going down G G flat. So this note can be can be called two different different things. That's called an enharmonic spelling. Uh, it can be a G flat or an F sharp. Uh, they can be called. Uh, it has two different names, and that's okay. Well, we'll get used to that eventually. G G sharp. And so you can um, uh, use that that octave pattern. But what if you have a um, a note on string five, where, where would be the next octave up from that? That's a little trickier. Okay. Let's take a C chord because there's a, a chord that you're familiar with. Here's a C on string five fret three. All right. It's the root or the lowest note of the chord. But then also string two fret one is a, is a C. We know that from our G scale. So C, so the next C note up would be, let's see, on string two, but two frets back. C, C, C sharp, C sharp, D, D, E flat, E flat, or D sharp, D sharp, sorry, E, E, and so on. So there's another octave trick you can use. But you can also do this, C, is this, the, this is the same C, but now I'm playing it with my first finger. And you know how you do that C minor chord you show me? Or B minor, they're the same shape. A C minor on the third fret. C. C. There's two C's in that one. There's not enough room on the fretboard for a third C. But C, C. String 5 fret 3. And string 3 fret 5. So this note, string 3 fret 5 and string two fret one are the same. String three fret five, and string two fret one, same note. So there's another octave pattern, then where do you go from there? String three fret five, and string one fret eight. So there's another octave, C, string five fret three, C, string three fret five, C, string one fret eight. So there's a, another pattern you can use. What if you have a note um, on the fourth string? Like let's take um, the E in your C chord, which is string four fret two. I'll put my first finger there so I can stretch out and get the next one. Ah. String two fret five is our next E. There's also open string one is an E, but the, the trick is three frets up on string two. So if you have an E on string four fret two, the trick is go up one, two, three frets on string two, and you have another E. So E, E, F, F, F sharp, F sharp, G, G. But you could also do it another way. Take your F chord. Remember, string four fret three with your pinky is an F. And string one fret one on the bottom, that's an F. So look at that one. F, F, F sharp, F sharp, G, G, G sharp, G sharp. So if you have a, a, an F, a note uh, on string four fret three, the trick is to go back two frets and uh, back two frets on the first string from there. Hey, that's kind of like the C that we did in the C chord, remember? String 5 fret 3 and string 2 fret 1. F is starting on string 4, string 4 fret 3, string 1 fret 1. Same octave pattern, same number of strings apart, same number of frets apart. Right? So it's down 3 strings and back 2 frets. C, C, F sharp, F sharp. What about if you have a note on string 3? How would you find the next octave up for now? A, string 3 fret 2, the next octave up would be 3 frets up on string 1. So 3 frets up and 2 frets away, or 2 strings away. Kind of like the E we did on string 4 fret 2 and string 2 fret 5. E, E, A, 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 A sharp, A sharp. 
Then when you get down to the second string, there, there's not enough room to go up an octave. So you have to go back an octave, like C, string two fret one, to C, <laughs> string uh, five fret three, or F, string one fret one, down an octave, to string four fret three. So there are a bunch of tricks you can use to name uh, notes. I would really try to get familiar with the names of the notes up to the fifth fret on every string. Here's one more thing you can use to do that. Use your alphabet like we did um, the other day and know the names of your strings. E, Eddie, A, Dynamite, Goodbye, Eddie, E, A, D, G, B, E, from the thickest string to the thinnest. E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A. And then name the notes on string five. A, A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, just to the fifth fret. G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, C, string two. B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, string one. E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, and A. If you know that many notes, that's going to cover you for like 99% of the notes that you're, that you're going to play until you start doing really crazy leads up here, which is a ways off. Okay, so uh, I know I went kind of fast, but you can always pause the, the video and, and re-listen, and you can always uh, hit me with questions. So have fun, practice hard, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.